Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about running serverless applications in the AWS cloud. This will just be an introductory video where I, where I go through some high level overview and explain the concepts. So there will be no code. So to start off with, I'll be talking about uh, containers on EC2. So I'll be going through what Docker is and what containerization is, as well as the issues that we face when we run containers on server-based environments. After that, I'll be talking about AWS's serverless compute platform, which is known as ECS Fargate. I'll be talking about two ways you can run containers on Fargate. So why Docker? Docker allows us to automate deployments by packaging applications so that they can be run efficiently in different environments. This is the default or the, the official uh, definition, if you will. But what does all that mean? Now, let's say that you want to develop uh, some Python application. So what you would usually do is you would you would install the Python runtime as well as all the dependencies that your application needs. This could be perhaps the PyTorch library on the or the Pandas library. You you would you would uh, you would install these using a package manager. And once you have installed all all of this onto your onto your target machine, you would upload your code and you would run it. Now this all looks well and good. But what happens if perhaps you want to run this on, on, on a different environment? Let's say you want to run it on a Windows environment. And let's say it doesn't work, right? Now, this is a very, very common issue, right? There could be a lot of reasons why this doesn't work. There could be uh, incompatibilities with the versions of the packages that you're using. Or you could be using a package that's only designed for Linux and, doesn't, and isn't really supported on Windows, right? Now... With Docker, what Docker allows us to do is to take all of the, is to take our code as well as the dependencies, uh, the runtime it needs and the libraries it needs to take all of that and package that as a single file known as a Docker file. Uh, yeah, known as, a, known as a Docker image actually. Uh, and then it allows us to run this <clears throat> on our target environments. So we don't, so first of all, we don't need to install dependencies and runtimes on the target environment. All we need is this, is this, uh, this Docker image. And second of all, we don't need to worry about incompatibilities in the target environment. So we simply have this Docker image that that has uh, that has all of our all of our code and the runtime and the dependencies packaged, and we simply run this on our target machine. So yeah, so you basically have everything uh, everything that you need. You you package that into something called a Docker image, and this package then runs on on a, on both a Windows machine as well as a Linux machine uh, as Docker containers. So this is the workflow. You create an application, first of all, this could be a Python Django app or Flask app. And after that, you create a Docker file. A Docker file is simply a text document that lists the commands th that you would run in order to create a Docker image. Uh, now we have these, it, it's much more convenient to have them stored uh, in, a, uh, in a text document. After that, you create a Docker image and you, and you upload this image to EC2 and you run the image as a container. So there are a lot of issues when you run containers on EC2 instances. One of them is that of scale, right? So imagine having hundreds of containers. The problem is that you need to manage these separately, right? And it's a lot of administrative overhead. What happens if a container stops working? You need to you need to constantly make health checks. You need to make sure that 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 you restart a container if it stops working, and you need to make sure that it can that it can reestablish a connection with the ones that are working. You just need to, yeah, so it's just a lot of overhead. And also, uh, yeah, so monitoring and health checks, right, are not really feasible when you have a lot of containers, uh, but also because it's a server-based environment, you also need to install updates uh, and patches, right? So imagine there's a, there's an update to to maybe the to the Postgres engine that you're using, um, a security fix or something like that, then you would have to make sure that you install that on each one of those containers, right? And if you have a lot of containers, this just does not scale. It's not feasible. So to fix that, we have something called ECS Fargate. This is a container orchestration or a container management service that makes it easy to deploy and manage uh, clusters of containers. There's actually also another version. So ECS Fargate is uh, has is, is based on this serverless compute, which basically means that the server is abstracted away from you, so you don't need to worry about about updates and patches, and all um, and and all the things that we discussed in the previous uh, section. Uh, there's also another version of ECS uh, which uses EC2 instances as the compute, but we won't really uh, be going into that um, in this video. So for ECS Fargate, we start off with something called one-off tasks. These are simply batch shops that need, that need to be run maybe once. 
This could be something like an image resizing function or, or some computation that needs to be done on a series of images or a series of, of numerical data. Um, so what you would have is you you would uh, yeah so you have your Docker image down here. Uh, you would upload this to Elastic Container Registry. This is just yeah like a cloud uh, storage for 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 Docker images. You, you can think of it as uh, as 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 GitHub or uh, as a Google Drive for Docker images on AWS. Uh, now this uh, yeah so this Docker image runs as containers in something called a task, and a task is just you can just think of it as a as a server instance, although it's not, it is a server, but abstracted away from you, right? Uh, right. So once you have that, oh, yeah. So once you have that, uh, yeah. And this runs the task runs in in in, a, uh, in an ECS cluster. This is simply a logical grouping of tasks, right? So you can have multiple tasks in a cluster, right? So it's just a way to to contain the tasks. Uh, you also have something called a task definition, and this is uh, a blueprint for tasks. So this is where you define um, the, the amount of CPUs and the RAM that you need and the ports that need to be opened and all that stuff. Right. Now, you also you can also use ECS for long-running tasks, right? This is uh, if you want to serve an API or something, then you would have uh, long-running tasks. And for this, uh, you would have something called a service. And again, this is just a logical grouping of tasks. So you can have um, <clears throat> uh, two tasks running under under a service, right? Um, so a service could be, for example, I mean, you could you could have like a service for um, for a development environment, and then you could have another service for a production environment, right? Th th this would be a way to sort of separate uh, the concerns, uh, right? And everything, yes, yeah, so all of this is contained in an ECS cluster. Um, there's also something called Fargate Capacity Provider, but this is not really uh, you can ignore that, right? So yeah, so 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 that's uh, that's the end of it, right? Um, so this is this is what what an ECS Fargate workflow looks like. Uh, you have these uh, you, you have you have these services contained in these services are tasks, uh, and this and it's 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 in these tasks that you have uh, your Docker images running as containers. In this case, there are two instances of a task, right? So this could be in, in an example where you have a lot of traffic, right? And you might need more than one instance or if the traffic dramatically increases through application, AWS would, would sort of replicate the instance, uh, yeah. And uh, to make sure that there's enough uh, enough computing resources to meet the demand. Uh, and then down here, we have another uh, uh, another service that is running another task and these would just, and yeah. And, and so these containers would be different from the ones up here, right? Uh, right, and you have all of this in a uh, in a in a cluster. So with ECS Fargate, the bottom line is you don't need to worry about dine, uh, about downtime. You don't need to worry about the server going down. You don't need to worry about installing updates. Let's say that you want to update your Python version. What do you do? You simply you simply update your uh, your application and you update the Docker file that gets created and you simply upload the new version of the Docker file to ECR. Um, and once you've done that, uh, it just ECS takes care of um, of uh, of of stopping these containers and restarting them. You don't have to worry about any of that, right? Uh, so you simply update the image if there are any changes. So health checks and updates, right? If there are any updates that need to be done to the Linux kernel, uh, it's uh, it's it, it's just done automatically for all your containers. You don't have to worry about that. So it's really a way to free up developers' time and help them focus more on, on developing applications instead of worrying about infrastructure and instead of worrying about things not running like they should. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you learned something useful and leave a comment if you have any questions. See you in the next one and thank you for watching.